Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance of Salta Shishu Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to this morning's Bhagavatam class. This morning we will be discussing from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Sorry, <laughs> Shimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> Shimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 18, Verses 33. And we are in the middle of the discussion where um, uh, Shringi, the Brahmana son, has found out what has happened to his father, by Marj Prikshit throwing the snake bird around his neck. So we are right in that hot topic and the hot discussion, and we're very happy to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami with us. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you and Shri Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, Jai Ho, my obeisances to all of the devotees, Manchakalpa, to Ivan Sindhu. Hey, <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Aho Adharmam Bhavanam Ritnam Bali Bhujam Nivam Swamiryadam Yadam Darsanam Dwaram Anam Sunam Iva Translation, the Brahman's son Shringi said, Oh, just look at the sins of the rulers who, like crows and watchdogs at the door, perpetrate sins against their master, contrary to the principles governing service. The Brahmins are considered to be the head and brains of the social body. Shakshis are considered to be the arms of the social body. The arms are required to protect the body from all harm. So the arms must act according to the direction of the head and the brain. That is natural arrangement by the Supreme Order. For it is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that four social orders or castes, namely, Putras, are set up according to quality and work done by them. Naturally, the son of a Brahman has a good chance to become a Brahman by the direction of the, his qualified father. As the son of a medical practitioner has a very good chance to become a qualified medical practitioner. So the caste system is quite scientific. The son must take advantage of the father's qualification and thus become a Brahman or medical practitioner and not otherwise. Without being qualified, one cannot become a Brahmin or medical practitioner, and that is the verdict of all scriptures and social orders. Herein, Sringi, a qualified son of a great Brahmana, attained the required medical power, both by birth and by training. But he was lacking in culture because he was an inexperienced boy. By the influence of Kali, the son of a Brahmana, became puffed up with medical power and thus wrongly compared Maharaj Priksha to crows and watchdogs. The king is certainly the watchdog of the state in the sense that he keeps vigilant eyes over the border of the state for its protection and defense. But to address him as a watchdog is the sign of a less cultured boy. Thus the downfall of the Brahminical Can't see anymore. Hmm. Prickshit's got. Where is it? You lost. No, no. Keep stay down. Prickshit, stay down. I got it now. Dust down for. Oops. Thus, the downfall of the Brahminical powers began as they gave importance to birthright without culture. The downfall of the Brahmana caste began in the age of Kali. 
And since the Brahmins are the heads of the social order, all other orders of society have also be, began to deteriorate. This beginning of rhythmical deterioration was highly deplored by the father of Sringi, as we will find. Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pacharine Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya Desitarine Ranchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Pe Bacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Shri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Siva Siddhivar, Bhakti Vrindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So the ideal social system, which is called Varna, and ashrama, varna is the social system. Ashrama is the four orders of the spiritual system. This is the foundation of the practice of Krishna consciousness. When Brahminical culture is working according to its qualifications, then the rest of the society works nicely. Kshatriyas take guidance from the Brahmins you know how to how to rule. The Vaishyas are also giving direction by both the Brahmins and the Kshatriyas for producing food, keeping cows, which are the foundation of the uh, social order in, in the quality of Necessity for cultivating land and providing food, which is foundational or necessary for the living entities to live nicely. And the sutras, they simply do their service to the three other orders. When that system is working nicely, then the system of ashram becomes easily organized, and those who follow. The social system can also easily follow the spiritual system. Social system is very important. Um, here we see an abrogation of the character of the Brahman, the Brahmin class. 12 year old boy, son of a qualified Brahmin, has also been guided by that qualified Brahmin, but he's proud. It has also been referred to in other verses that he wanted to show his Brahminical power to his friends. So he took the opportunity to take a situation which really wasn't so serious and turned it into something as a major um, offense. Maharaj Parikshit was traveling, he stopped at the ashram of Shamik Rish. The Rish was in meditation and wasn't aware of the presence of Maharaj Parikshit. Maharaj Parikshit felt that he wasn't being properly welcomed. He was thirsty, he wanted some water. So what he did was quite unusual for his position and for his character, being a Vaishnava. He took a stick and picked up a dead snake that was laying nearby and put it around the Rishi's neck, saying, here's your garland. And then he left. So the Rishi wasn't even aware you might say Maharaj Flix had acted a little bit outside of his normal way, but it wasn't such a big offense. 
But here, this 12-year-old boy, who now he has power also because he's born in a Brahmin family and he's been trained in Brahminical education, but not in Brahminical culture, as it's indicated here. And therefore, he didn't understand Maharishi's position as being a powerful Kshatriya, who is not only that, but a pure devotee of the Supreme Personality. He's a Rajarsi. So what Maharaj Pariksha did was wrong, but the reaction was way beyond the offense. And now he's cursed. His father is quite annoyed by when he learns about the facts leading up to the curse. And he's sorry to hear that. Maharaj Pariksit, as it's mentioned, was so powerful that he could have counteracted the curse if he wanted to. But he felt it was the arrangement of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. A devotee of the Lord will accept reverses in life as the arrangement of the Lord for some higher purpose. And the higher purpose in this case was to bring Maharaj Pariksit back to the spiritual world. And second was to have Sukadeva Goswami speak the Srimad Bhagavatam for the benefit of the entire world from time immemorial. But he wasn't aware of that. But he could understand this is the arrangement of the Lord. So by the arrangement of the Lord, um, sometimes things go opposite according to social, even spiritual conventions. But the devotee sees that, that there is some reasons for that. They try to understand the reason and work accordingly and accept it as, a, as an opportunity for making spiritual advancement. And Maharaj took it in that way. But here we find that the, this particular incident is a very historical, uh, and it's a very powerful point in the history of uh, an ashram culture wherein the Brahmin caste no longer was able to uh, lead the rest of the social orders. And so the downfall of the Ruminical society came with this particular incident. And what was that downfall? The Ranashram system became a caste system. Sometimes the word caste is used in different ways, but ultimately it means something that is not natural, but it looks natural. Uh, if, you, if you're born in a particular family, then you have that quality automatically. There is a consideration for birth, but ultimately, as the example is given, one cannot practice medicine unless they're trained to practice medicine, although they're born in a family of doctors. One cannot practice the medical physician unless they also have Training. So it's car it's yeah, it's not just jama, it's karma too. Jama is a benefit, but it's not complete unless the karma actually develops. So in our Krishna consciousness movement, Srila Prabhupada has been talking about this from system since the day he began preaching Krishna consciousness in the Western world. And he's been emphasizing that, of course, the caste system or the, the Van Ashram system cannot be introduced in society because society is too topsy-turvy. There's no way to educate people and have an evaluation system based on that education, which is necessary in order to engage people after giving them education. And the quality of this age is Kolo Sudra Sambhavan, 
is that everyone is born sudra, but there is latent characteristics that are there when Swadharma remains hidden. And through the process of education and evaluation, then one that, that Swadharma becomes revealed. So Srila Prabhupada, for the first, you might say, eight years of the ISKCON movement, pretty much rejected the whole idea. But then in 1974, when he saw that the devotees, when I, chanting Hare Krishna is so easy, why is everyone falling down? Many devotees were falling down after being engaged in devotional service. He said, because people are not engaged properly. And therefore, we must set up this daivi vanarsham. Daivi simply means spiritual in this case. And that is that creating a medical class based on education and practice and using that ready to educate people accordingly. And that still has not been done to its, what we say, satisfactory degree within our Krishna consciousness movement. Although if you look, you'll see that people are engaged in various services in our movement. And some of them are actually working according to their nature. And many of them are just doing services because it's required by the society, by the temples, by the yatra. And a lot of times people find it difficult to maintain that service because they're not feeling it's not natural to their swadharma. So Srila Prabhupada, you can hear it on the uh, morning walk conversation in March 14th, 19. 74 in Vrindavan, Prabhupada in detail discusses this whole Daivi Banarsham. And again in March 16th, two days later, he continues with the same thing. He said, now we have to introduce this Daivi Banarsham. That means those who are Brahminically inclined will work in that way and serve the Lord that way. Shatriyas will serve the Lord according to their uh, required swadharma or their duties, the vices, and of course, sudras don't require training. They simply require to be connected to a good master so they can serve that master and make advancement that way. So this, this was Prabhupada's, as he said, my unfinished business before he disappeared in 1977, and it's quite significant that you know, Prabhupada was struggling with ill health beginning pretty much in May of 1977, June, July, August, September. In September, his health started to pick up again. And Prabhupada said, I am going to Nagri, and I'm going to show you practically how to work the land. So he said this Van Ashram can only be established in our farm communities. He made that a point clearly. And so he said, I will show you how to do it. Unfortunately, Prabhupada didn't make it to Nagri. He got sick when he stopped in London. He stayed there for a little while. His health dropped again. He was forced to return to Vrindavan, India. But he was so determined, especially in the last year, 77, to help get this program underway of farm communities and uh, Van Ashram colleges, which means that to the Brahmins, in the collective sense, not that each Brahmin has to know all of the 
activities, but in the collective sense, all of the activities of the society should be known by the collective Brahmanas, and they would teach the Kshatriyas, they would teach the Vaishyas how to perform their duties. And based on the education, there would be an evaluation system by which one can designate people according to their, uh, what we say, developed qualities and characteristics. That was probably, and so it is not being done so much, but there is a loose sense of uh, Van Ashram now in our society, there are devotees who are working according to their nature and others who are not. The Prabhupada wanted the whole society to be trained, education, evaluation, and service ultimately. <laughs> and that way he said, when the four orders are working together, there is complete peace within this society. He writes about that in the second canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. He describes that this is the foundation for peace. And without peace, no one can execute their duties properly. No one in the material world is peaceful. And because the material energy doesn't allow that. But, and, he, and people don't understand. They, they think that the success of one's occupation, so money becomes the focus, money becomes the by which people govern their, they have money, they can make mistakes and cover their mistakes with money. So money has become the focus economic development, but you call it economic development, but it's not. It's just greed for material success, ultimately gratification. But for our ISKCON society as the foundation for leading the world, the Prabhupada wanted ISKCON to be established in such a way as we could teach the rest of the world both how to live in a practical way, according to the system of Varna, and ultimately introduce people to the goal of life through the practice of Krishna consciousness, particularly through education based on Sri and employing people in chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Twofold practice, because without the social foundation, one's spiritual practice may also be somewhat disturbed as a pure devotee. Pure devotees can work in any situation, and they don't require any particular social arrangement. But not everyone is a pure devotee, and especially for those who live with family, who have responsibilities with their occupation and with uh, family maintenance, they need a solid, stable foundation where they can fulfill all of their needs materially, and then they can be directed more and more towards spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. We see in our society what we have done, we have emphasized the spiritual, we have neglected the material foundation by which the spiritual stabilizes. That's why Prabhupada said in 1974, if chanting Hare Krishna is so easy, why are people diving on ashram or spiritual on ashram? Engaging people in services according to their, their nature. So that was Prabhupada's long-range goal, and he spoke about that even before he began his movement, while he was still in, in India, all the way back in 1949, 
he wrote a paper called the Gitanagri Concept, which is one of the simple things and uh, education based on one's particular natures. And when that actually starts to manifest, then the whole world will gradually change to Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said, it's not possible to make everyone Krishna conscious, but if we can make 10% of the people Krishna conscious in the world, then we have a foundation by which we can bring more and more people into it based on the principle of varna. That means engaging people according to their occupation. Because as the social environment starts to fragment and is more, it will, because a society that is not based on spiritual characteristics is not, cannot sustain itself. It will break down. And it's already breaking down. People are struggling simply to maintain those who were, had enough for everything years ago are finding even the basic things that they need are hard to get. And that will continue. And then as Prabhupada talks about that, there will be no rice, there will be no wheat, there will be no sugar, there will be no milk. As Kali Yuga progresses and people become more and more sinful. So in order to establish a, a spiritual practice, the social order should also be included within that uh, plan. And this is Prabhupada's program. And that's the ideal social order. The Brahmins, they guide the rest of the uh, Varnas and the Kshatriyas, they manage and give protection against outside influences. The Vaishas provide food, take care of cows, which are the backbone of the of the agricultural system. And they also do banking and commerce, trade. See, in, in an ideal system, paper money is not even considered. Even money or uh, what we say valuable coins are even secondary when uh, the ideal system is a barter system based on you produce something and I produce something else. And I have more than I need. And so I trade with you based on what you have. And then I get what I need through your work. You need through my work. Analysis of how the four orders can work based on a system of trade and, and trading labor and trading goods like that. But there has to be the spiritual foundation to keep everything together. Therefore, as it's mentioned in, the, uh, in this section, I think you passed it up in the 17th chapter, you have finished that, that uh, human society requires three main features, which are the foundation for the whole execution of social and spiritual success. One is Brahminical culture. Two is cow protection, cow care. Three is worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. These are the three foundations that make up society. So cows are a very integral part of human culture. They're not just machines to produce uh, um, uh, milk, they actually give auspiciousness. They're used in worship. They provide a certain ambience to the environment that makes everything peaceful and natural. When cows 
are begin taken care of nationally. And the bulls are also very important. They can plow the fields. The cows provide milk. They provide cow dung. This can be used for heating. So many things. The benefits of the cow uh, is a long list. <laughs> We're just mentioning a few. Uh, if you want to want to learn more about it, you read books by Bhakti Raghavaswami, who has dedicated his whole spiritual practice to developing Vanashram's Dharma. And he's written books and explained these things in detail. Uh, so everything is there. Mm -hmm. So what we see here is the downfall of the natural Brahminical culture when a unqualified son of a qualified Brahma uses his power unnecessarily to curse a pure devotee of the Lord. And because of that, the whole Brahminical culture actually started to gravitate down. As mentioned in this thing, this was the beginning of Brahminical degradation. So, uh, and here it says that he's uh, he's speaking, he's calling Maharaj Pariksit, comparing them to cr crows and watchdogs. It's quite a it's quite an offensive statement. The Shastras also act as watchdogs; they guard against outside enemies in that sense. But to say that they were sinful and to compare them to crows or even watchdogs is uh, is an exaggeration of the activity that supposedly was considered to be a wrong activity. So, um, so Sringi, he's only 12, but he's powerful because he he's practiced in Brahmatejas. He knows Brahmatejas, but he doesn't know Brahminical culture and proper offense or that that uh, that curse upon Maharaj Pariksh. Okay, so we'll stop there. Thank you so much, Marge. It was such a really deep class of very, very good points and would definitely request devotees, if you have any questions, you know, clarification, please do raise your hand. I would request Priksha to stop sharing and uh, we will open up for questions. Please do raise your hand so I can call you in the order. And if you are able to, please do um, uh, show your video so that we can you know see each other and have each other's association and uh you know and have a personal association marge i will start off and i think i hope i heard the question the your comment correctly in the class marge and i was just wondering where's my questions okay marge why is it not natural for one to execute service in their swadharma i mean if that is their guna and their quality then why is it not natural because in this age, we require training. Cologne, Sidra, some of them, people are, are not born according to their, what they are their nature. It's covered. And therefore, the whole process of education is meant to uncover that, that, that Swadharma. Therefore, in, in, in providing that education, Sidra Prabhupada wanted to start what is called Vanashram College which was a series of educations given by Brahm the Brahminian Brahmins in our society. Yeah, because people don't know their actual Swadharma. It's covered. This is Kali Yuga. And Marj, that, that, that is also why uh, uh, Prabhupada says that ISKCON is actually an educational institution. Because I think sometimes, you know, there's this mood that it puts out that it's only a deity worship institution but it's actually an educational institution he's also made that statement many times he said our temples are meant for education not simply for deity worship 
Did he worship is to detract people and also give them an opportunity to worship the Supreme Lord. But the real business is education. That's why he, you, you can find many statements in this regard. And Prabhupada said we should be, throughout the whole day, we should have classes on Krishna conscious philosophy and practice. And in the evening, we should have three hours of care time. So that's in that's in the, in the scriptures. And he's also emphasized that through his, through his lectures. He then uh, just Bhagavatam in the morning, Bhagavad Gita in the evening was his standard for starting it, but he wanted the devotees to, to be trained and educated so they could also present the philosophy at any time in any place and educate both society and people in general so people would, could come to our temples and they could take part in hearing the different uh, presentations classes on different topics that would go on throughout the whole day that was Prabhupada's Duty Roshan would be going on, but there is two tr tracks. There is Pancharashuki Vidhi, which is Didi worship, and there's Bhagavad 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 Vidhi, which is hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord and, and engaging in practical devotion. And so Pancharachariki Vidhi is really a supportive for Bhagavad Vidhi, but it is not, not the goal. We have to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Otherwise, we're not in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> so, Marge, uh, so D.D. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, one, one other point was in the previous age, in the Dwarpara Yuga, Didi worship was the Yuga Dharma, and people were qualified. And the system of Didi worship is not like we have now. Prabhupada said, I've give, only given you 20% of the actual system. He said, if I gave you the whole system, you wouldn't be able to do it. It's very precise, very exact, and uh, one cannot make any mistakes in it either. It's And Marge, even with it, Marge, I was going to say, even with but the percent we struggle. In this age, what is the Yuga Dharma's chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra? Thank you, Marge. That was, um, yeah, what I was saying is, even with the 20%, we are struggling. <laughs> Forget the 80%. Up now. Can you hear me, Maraj? Am I clear now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, what is it? Somehow I think, Maraj, your um, the Wi Fi. Manda, your... Manda, Manda, Thank you, Marge. Somehow the Wi-Fi. Prayesa al Prayesa Sabda Kalon Yugay Jasmin Janaha Manda. So in this verse, it says that in Kali Yuga, people are slow, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and always disturbed. This is this is the character description of people in this age. March, what's that verse again, March? Everyone is always fraught with anxiety. That's there for who can Um, 
Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, verse number 10. Marge, I missed the um, the chapter because your Wi-Fi was going in and out. Can you say it again, Marge, please? Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, first chapter, verse number 10. Okay. Thank you, Marge. Thank you. Um, Raj Prabhu, I think Bring it up. Um, you'll find some. Thank you, Marge. Somehow, Marge, your your Wi-Fi on your end is choppy and it's going in and out. That's why I kept asking you. I, I apologize, Marge. Shima Bhavatam. Sorry. Uh, Shima Bhavatam, Canto 1, one, 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 one ten. Okay. Raj Prabhu, I think yeah, you had your Can you hear up. me now? Yeah, clear? Marsh, we can hear you, but it just gets choppy every now and then, and that's that's the concern, yeah. I'm at a I new think... place. I just came to this place today. Yeah, that's what um, I was assuming. Oops, not kind of, not so Marsh, I don't know if you, if uh, by turning off your camera, mm. will it be better? I I don't know. One, one. Okay, how's that? Oh my God, yeah, I, that actually did help. Yes, yes, thank you, Mark. Um, Raj Prabhu, I think you had your question up. I mean, your your hand up, Prabhu. Uh, yes. Uh, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble face and cease all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. I wanted to ask if we wanted to engage every devotee into the most appropriate services according to their Svad Dharma, according to their nature, then is there a process to, ident a, to identify each mm. devotee's Svad Dharma? And is there a process to categorize each of the temple services so that they could be easily matched? Yeah. I explained that. I said Prabhupada wanted to set up the Vanashram College. So we need a college before we can do this. Yeah. Okay. If you listen to that lecture by Srila Prabhupada, March 14th, 1974, everything is explained there. Morning walk. Vrindavan, March 14th, 1974. Hey, Maharaj. Yeah. I mentioned that the Brahmins as a collective program would be versed in all of the activities of all the varnas and they would be the teachers thank you march any questions from devotees any um am i am i am i still choppy when you turn your camera Marsh, when you turn your camera off, it's it's clearer, it's a little bit of choppiness, but but not as bad as when it's when your camera is on. I there's two websites here, two internet sites. I if I go to the other internet site, I might be able to Okay. Do you would you like to try that, Marge? Uh, clear on everything. Okay. It'll take a few minutes. That's fine, Marge. We can hang in there. We really want to hear you as clear as possible, Marge. Do it? Yes, Marge, please. <laughs> we will eagerly play I'll some questions while waiting for you. Back in about two minutes. No problem, Marge.
if Prichet can play some bhajans while we can do something, while we can chant or something, but oh, I would okay. not hear this. Sure. That would be really nice. All right. Let me get on here. Oops. And pull you to get It's such a deep topic that every word is like nectar and we just got to <laughs> I don't want to miss it. <laughs> the choppiness is causing it's, it's interrupting. <laughs> okay. I swear <laughs> I saw Maharaj. I swear I saw Maharaj. I definitely was not imagining things this time, for sure. You're on, your mic is on. Yeah, I'm talking to myself, unfortunately. <laughs> no, I no, I said I, I saw Maharaj joining. 
Yeah, I know. That's why I got off. Oh, we'll wait again. That's all right. Stop. YouTube is also recording, so. <laughs> Very cool. Wait, he's here. Is here? I just admitted, Marat. So let us see. Hmm. I think it's a connection issue. Wherever he's at, we'll patiently wait. Whoa. Haribo, Maharaj. Is any better? Um, Marsh, can, uh, let's try turning your camera on and then see what happens. Haribo. Haribo, Maharaj. We can hear you. Abba, Abba, come, come to my, come, come to the room. Yes, yes, I'm coming. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wasn't able to get on that other site. I don't know. Can you hear me? No? Yeah, so far you just yes. good, Maraj. Okay. Let's continue. Yeah, we'll just continue. Thank you, Mark. Um, I, I think someone had a question, and I don't remember who it was. Um, Raj. Raj, yes, Raj Prabhu had a question. That's right. Raj Prabhu, was your, was your question answered, Prabhu? I didn't want to miss you. If you had a question, that is. I believe my question was answered. It was. Okay, okay. Thank you, Marj. Thank you, Raj Prabhu. Thank you. Any other questions from devotees? Please uh, do uh, raise your hand and uh, and um, ask your question if you have any questions, any doubts. Marj, another question I had was, Prabhupada started off the purport by saying that the Brahmanas are the brain and the body of the society. Um, did he say the brain and something? But I remember seeing the word brain there. And... Um, the head and the brain. The head so, and the brain. Yeah. The head and the brain of the social body. And we know that now Kali Yuga, you know, we may not have that qualified Brahmanas. And wh whoever we have, whatever we have, you know, lack of a better word, I think we have been addressed as Kali Yuga Brahmanas. <laughs> so what is the... Um, so being quote unquote Maharaj, Kali Yuga Brahmanas, how can we be the example to be the head and the brain of the society? Why do you call yourself Kali Yuga Brahman? Brahmins are Brahmins. You're either I... a Brahmin or you're not. <laughs> it's not like <laughs> well, well, well Marsh, you were saying, you know, like. This is like 5,000 years ago, the Brahmanas did so much tapasyas and, you know, they're so elevated and, you know, they could, they, they, they had so many powers. And at least I know I don't have a drop of that. <laughs> well, look at our movement. We're spreading Krishna consciousness around the world hmm. by spreading medical culture. The uh, worship system is the chanting of the holy name. Our books, if we read and study Srimad Bhagavatam and understand it, we can also come up to the standard of practicing of, of a practicing Brahmin. And how do we do more, Maharaj? Prabhupada is giving medical initiation. And March, how can we do more? How how can can we do more? And well, 
How can we do more? Well, what is what is Brahman? There's six characteristics that make up Brahminical activity. Patan, Patan, Yajan, Yajan, Dana, Pratigra. To know the scriptures, to teach the scriptures, to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and to teach worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, to give in charity and to receive charitable gifts. These are the six activities of the Brahmanas. Along with that, there are the characteristics and qualities that make up character. We check ourselves based on these uh, qualities. And so, what is it? Samo, Hama, uh, equipoise, simple, peaceful, tolerant, clean, truthful, uh, knows the scriptures, uh, Jnana Vijnana, knows the scriptures, can teach the scriptures, and is engaged in devotional service. These are the qualities of the Brahmins. Uh, 18, 42 in Bhagavad Gita, this is the nine characteristics. And in the Sanat Sanjita, three more are added. There's 12 in that one, 12 characteristics of a Brahman. So uh, we test, do I have these qualities? Am I exhibiting these qualities? So everything is known by quality. Just because you attain a position of Brahminical, Brahminical initiation doesn't mean you have developed the qualities. Our system of initiation is based on having the qualities before receiving initiation. We haven't followed that. And uh, we've used, we've given Brahminical initiation uh, just surreptitiously because people have been in the movement so many years or if we need a if we need someone to do brahminical services, we see someone and then we give them that position. But that doesn't mean they're qualified. Qualified means you mean you have to exhibit these qualities both in in character and in action also. There are many devotees in our movement who are gurus who are very strong and not giving second initiation because devotees haven't come up to that stage. First initiation is preliminary, and it guides you, connects you with the spiritual master, but the medical initiation is the real initiation. It's called Upanaya Samskara. It's one of the samskaras that is required. And that's receiving the sacred thread, which is the mantra of the guru. Chanting the Gayatri Mantra. So, if it, just because we have a thread doesn't mean we're Brahmin. You have to be engaged in Brahminical activity and you have to be exhibiting the court. So whether it's Kali Yuga or any other Yuga, these qualities are required. <laughs> Thank you, Marj. That was really strong points. Thank you. I really made note. And Marj, you said that you mentioned the six attitudes of the, of the Brahmana, but I think you said three more or four more was in another book, Marj. What's that book called? Then that's Sujata. It's mentioned in the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam in one purport. Prabhupada lists the 12 qualities of a Brahmana. It's in the Bhagavatam. It's somewhere in this 12th, seventh canto. I think it's chapter number nine or, so, or 10 or something. Okay. There's a footnote that indicates these 12. 
which are four additional qualities. Okay. Thank Krishna you. Only nine, three additional qualities. Krishna mentions only nine in the, in the Gita. And that's in 1842, right, Maharaj, you said? That's yeah. the one was okay. listed by Krishna. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Any questions from devotee? This is a very nice topic. It's nice to... I have the reference for... Oh, okay, Marge. Oops, did I lose him, Marge, again? It froze. Uh-oh. You want to know the other question? I can give me a minute. I'll find them. Yes, Marge. Thank you. I'm still with you. Yes, Marge. Is this that? Um, it's it's choppy. Oops, we lost March. We will have to wait. And we shall wait. It's one, of, one of those days. One of those days where we patiently have to wait for nectar. I think uh, Krishna is teaching us what it means to wait for nectar and we have to patiently tolerate and wait with <laughs> for nectar and when it comes just grab it <laughs> wait mara just back yeah perfect wait 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 Oh, uh, yeah, the minute I'll find it. Can you hear me? Marsh, we can hear you. Um, so far, so good. It's a little bit muffled, but we can, but, but it's coming through, so that's good. Hey, Bo? Yes, Maraj. Can you hear us, Maraj? Haribo, Maraj? Uh oh. Picture is frozen. Yeah, I know. His picture is frozen. The video, yeah. I don't know if going to gallery will help matters. Okay, you're not with him. Really? That's Maraj. Oops. How about now? How about you? Can you Hi, yes, Maraj. Yes, Maraj. Okay. Seven, 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 chapter, verse seven, nine, ten. Seven, nine, ten. Okay. Made the note. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, chapter 9, verse 10. That's what it is. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Any other questions from devotees on this really amazing point? You have to, you don't have to stop all of this. Go ahead, but don't lose this connection here. Seven, nine, ten? That's what Maharaj said, yes. Okay, I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. Any questions from devotees? Bef um, anything? Um, I, I know we've had, you know, issues with hearing Maharaj, but I'm hoping that there'll be some questions, some realizations, or even some, you know, clarification if there's any. So please uh, do 
raise your hands. Um, yes, Biku Prabhu, please go ahead, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I think today we are suffering from the voice picture issue. I hope I can convey my message. Technology for me is good when it works. Denver Prams and uh, my humble obeisances. Maharaj, uh, can you hear me? Seems no, no reply. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Bo, can you hear me now? Yes. I, I can hear you. Can you hear me, Mara? Yeah, we got on we got on the right side. We got off the other side. Now we're on the right one. So everything's good now. You're pretty clear now. That's wonderful. Yeah, we were we have two sites. One site is not so good. Okay. Now well, now it's... even Anasuya is not frozen. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's bad, Marat. If I'm, <laughs> I should be frozen, right? <laughs> Don't freeze, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm happy that you're not frozen because we want to hear you so bad. So Bhikkhu Prabhu, please go ahead. <laughs> okay, Hare Krishna. My humble obeisances, then with pranam, Maharaj. Uh, the question that, or something that puzzles me, the four varna. In a family, it's very difficult. Now, if I take my family, what is the, what varna is applicable in the sense, Brahmin, Kshatriya, uh, Vaishna, Vaishya, Yasudra. Now, children can take different professions. Someone could go for doc being a doctor, another dentist. Oh, I think this uh, system was there, it worked, but in the modern age, uh, this, uh, it's difficult to know which burner am I in? Now, if I look back at our grandparents, we were shoemakers, but no longer we are doing that profession. So it's like change from Sudra into Krishna, conscious, uh, Krishna consciousness and Vaishnava qualities. So I don't know which Varna will apply. I, in your case, I wouldn't remember. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. Just tell Hare Krishna. You you know, you are. You might say. Um, it's not important for you to engage in certain services as long as you do some kind of service. You're okay. Mm -hmm. But for new people who are training and need activity throughout the day, otherwise they'll fall into Maya, then, uh, and then their training is required. <laughs> for you, you can just read books, chant the holy name, take care of the people that you're responsible to take care of and go to the temple, see the deity, give a donation to support Krishna consciousness. All these things you can do nicely. Thank you, Maharaj. Your blessings needed. That was a nice question, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Any other questions from devotees, please uh, uh, do ask, do raise your hand. Uh, very, very nice point that was mentioned by Maharaj in this class. And now we got Maharaj on the 
uh, right internet track <laughs> so we can hear everything that Marge is going to tell us. <laughs> yes, Prish. yes, Marge. No, go ahead, Silpesh. Oh. Yes, Silpesh Prabhu, go ahead, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, the answer you just gave, Bhikkhu Prabhu, does that apply to most of us who aren't like in ashram? We're more Vyastas. Well, you should do some service. But what are you inclined to do? You can choose. You can go, go to the, go to the uh, temple, and see if you can find some service to do. There's always things to do, especially Bhakti Vedanta Manor. They have so many programs going on. Most of the programs go on by the congregation anyway. What do you like to do? Uh, I'm serving on a devotee care committee at the manor. No, okay, there you go. The Jaini Thai Prabhu. And I host the Gujarati language sangha as well. I started that for people you know, to have sanghas in Gujarati. Well, read and read the books so you can understand how to guide people philosophically also. Yes, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Study the books. Mm -hmm. That's a nice service, devotee care, Prabhu. Really nice. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Did you want to go to that verse, 7, 9, 10? Yes, Marge. I'm going to have a Prikshit pull that up. Yeah, I'll try to do that. 7, um, 9, 10. 10. Yeah, I'll go on to your person. Oh, that. Yeah, I was going to check on that verse after, but yes, thank you. Seventh Canto. Seven, seven Canto, chapter 9, verse 10. A person is known by his, his qualities and his character, not, not by his position or by his, his uh, birth. Okay, now you come back to Zoom. Okay. okay, you found it. Okay. You see there in quality, you see the second one in the synonyms, it says, Dwi Sat Guna Yuyat. Quality, right. quality with 12 Brahminical qualities. Go to, let me see, here, it says 12 qualities. Do, Maharaj, do you want him to go down to, to the purport, Maharaj? Um, it says it's, they are stated in the book, Sanat Sujata. Yeah. Okay. You have to go, it's actually a, a what do you call it? It's a, an asterisk at the end of the page, okay? You, you mm. passed it up. You passed it up. Mm -hmm. it, stop, stop, stop. It's right there. Sanat Sujata. Yeah, but you pa yeah, you're not reading the qualities. Uh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go. Go up. A, go up the page a little. There you go. Uh, you missed it again. <laughs> a little bit down. Stop. Do you see? Oh. There it is. Nana cha satya cha dharma srutam cha. These are the qualities here. Yajas cha dana cha drishti samasya mahadrata dvadusa brahmanasya. These are the qualities. Or as follows. Go down, you'll read the translation. Is that there? I don't I don't see the translation now. 
It went straight to the European yeah, American. Purple. It's 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 an asterisk, and it's given as a uh, like a footnote. To, you have to go to the page in the book to see it. So oh. it's not here then. Yeah, I think if you go to the actual Veda base, you know, the one that that the other one, I think it has the asterisk more that if you click on it, you should probably. Okay. Yeah. So the regular Veda base then. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, but I'm going to check. But yeah, I know what Marge is trying to say. Sometimes if it's an asterisk, if you click on the when it's hyperlink and you, and you click on it, it'll take you to that book. That's what it is. You go up the page and you'll get it. So go up the page, you'll get it. Okay. No, but I opened with a base. <laughs> yeah, we just get off. No, just okay. go up, go up the page, up the page, go keep going up till you get to the translation again. Ah, I know what my, so go, yes. I so if you can keep going up, go up, so, go all the way to the top. And if you go to the the no, stop right there, put your yeah. cursor on Dwitsa Guna Yut Put your, your yeah. cursor on that. Okay. Yeah. Put it on the hyperlink. No, 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 no. Put your cursor on the hyperlink of Dwitsa Guna Yutat. Oh, okay. Ah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Well, now we just is okay. It's oh, all right. This is this is interesting. Let me go back. But see, do we, I can't get all four of them at, at one go because it's defining just one at a time. Okay. You see, if you go sat, it will define sat. I see. Okay, unless I can try one thing. It's on the asterisk, on the asterisk. Right there, yeah. It's, it's not a hyperlink. Mm -hmm. It's not changing like this. It's not underlining it. I could just click on it, but nothing, yeah, nothing but happens with the asterisk. Okay. Maharaj, you know what, Maharaj? I found it on Madhya Leela 2059. All okay, the twelve qualities. Majalila. Okay. Yep. Madalila 2059, the 12 qualities for a Brahmana, 12 qualifications. Is that it, Maharaj? Yep. Yep. Okay. So go to Madalila 12 uh, 2059. Go all the way down. Yep. There we go. Is that it, Maharaj? That's it. Okay. Thank you, Krishna. <laughs> and if you go down to the verse, it's actually listed there. I just read it just now. There there, it yes. Right there. Yep. A Brahmin must be perfect, peaceful, self-control, austerity, purity, tolerance, honesty, knowledge, wisdom, religious. These are, this is what's in the 1852. But here says he must severe austerities, detached, humble, tolerant, not, end. oops, where are you going? You just lost it. No, oh, I can, I can see it still though. It's further down. Yeah. Mental, yeah, equilibrium. Mental equilibrium, sense control, austerity. No, you have to go up, not down. You go up. No, the other way. I was just reading it, and then you moved it. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, it's just right. Can yeah, you stop, see stop, now? Stop, stop. Yes, stop right there. Okay. The Brahman must, he must be truthful, control the senses, severe austerities, detached, humble, tolerant, not envious, perfect in performing sacrifices, giving in charity, Fixed in devotional service, expert in knowledge. These are the 12 qualifications for a Brahmana. Mm -hmm. mm. Perfectly religious, truthful. Mm -hmm. Can and you guys then, see it? And Krishna mentions the eight, the nine qualities in 1850, 42. 
peacefulness, self-control, austerity, purity, tolerance, honesty, knowledge, wisdom, and religiousness. These are only nine. And this other one is 12. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Madalila 2059. So you see the you'll see the three new the three different ones. One is um uh, not envious of anyone, expert in performing sacrifices, and giving whatever he has in charity. Mm -hmm. So we have another verse. Thank you, Marge. Very good points. I just made a note of that. I want to go back and read it. So powerful. Thank you. Any other questions from devotees? Anything that's coming to your mind, any clarification or takeaway, please do unmute yourself or you can raise your hand. That way I, I don't miss anyone. Sometimes I tend to miss catching if there are more than one hands coming up. Uh, Marge, there is a, I just forgot to read this um, message in the quote. If you remember, Maharaj, the when you were in Harrisburg, there was one devotee who was your driver. If you remember him, yeah, uh, yeah he got initiated in Vrindavan, and his new name, and he just put a note that his new name is um, Sarvanga Sundar Damodar Das. Okay. And he and he's asking for your blessings, Maharaj. To, oh, he says that I will I will try to develop some Brahman qualities before going for Brahman initiation. <laughs> and he wants your blessings, Maharaj. That's what his message is here. I don't see any other quote by devotees. Just the verses, and I, and I hope the bodies have caught the verses. If there are no questions, Marge, would you like to end with a round of chanting? Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakti Vrindam 